In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips that are a little bit more specific, but can pay huge dividends right away, especially when it comes to fat loss. And if you've been following my channel, you already know what the big things are that you need to focus on. You need to work out, and the best way to do that is through resistance training. So you can build some muscle. You need to focus on your diet. You wanna focus on eating single ingredients, mostly in process, nutrient-dense foods. Get adequate and quality sleep. Make sure you're managing your stress levels and make sure that your head is in the right place. Your mindset is what kind of ties everything together here. And I talk about those five topics in a lot of my other videos, so make sure you check them out. So we're not gonna go into those big pillars today. I'm just gonna assume that you already have a good understanding of them. In this video, we're gonna go into small but very actionable tips because it's so much easier to implement and stick with small changes rather than big sweeping changes or just throwing over simplistic blank statements like oh why don't you just eat less and move more like you think people haven't tried that and when it doesn't work then that's when people start to hit that panic and overwhelm button that's why I always like to say that there are levels to this and the higher you get the better these are the exact same tips that I give to all my students and they've all gone to see some amazing results so you know what works before we get started give this video a like subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week let's start with a big one liquid calories get rid of soda or energy drinks like gatorade juice and replace it with better options i don't often throw blanket statements that certain foods are bad for you i mean there are no bad foods per se only processed ones so you should kind of know where i'm going with this but i'm gonna make a special exception for this certain food group and that's soda juice and alcohol listen there is a grand total of zero nutritional value when it comes to soda same thing with energy drinks like gatorade and red bull let me just go as far as saying that if you're someone who regularly drinks this stuff and you take them out of your diet your life will change i guarantee you're gonna lose a ton of weight and your health will drastically improve because soda is literally poison in your body there's really no other way to put it you're literally just drinking liquid sugar which causes a huge spike in insulin which is your storing hormone to store all the sugar that you ingested because too much sugar in your blood is toxic yes some of that gets stored in your liver and muscle as glycogen but the majority of it guess what it gets stored as body fat what about juice it's honestly no better you're literally just drinking a can of coke with some vitamins and if vitamins is all you're after you can get it from way better sources like meat and vegetables when it comes to alcohol i have yet to find a research that shows that it's good for the human body it's just not you're poisoning your body when you drink this stuff you're poisoning it just enough that's why you get the buzz alcohol in the form of ethanol is also known as the first to burn calories which means that your body has to prioritize metabolizing it first because again then it's poisoned. Your body doesn't want to die. And this problem gets magnified if you eat and drink at the same time, which most people do. Because drinking alcohol pauses the burning of the calories from food. Because again, your body has to prioritize metabolizing the poison first. And those food calories conveniently get stored as, again, body fat. Like if you drink once or twice a month, that's fine. Your body will handle that. Which means that alcohol should really be saved for special occasions. But if you're on an alcohol bender every weekend, it doesn't matter that you have a really good diet and you work out all the time. That's not how it works and you're going to be severely disappointed by your results or lack thereof. Or you might be able to get away with it at first, but it'll catch up to you eventually. That's why you see some people abuse this stuff and they look fine. But that doesn't mean that everything is good on the inside. There's something called fatty liver disease that you get from drinking drinking too much alcohol. Let's talk about levels. If you're extremely addicted to sugar, you can try to substitute it first with something like Zevia, which is a soda that's sweetened with Stevia. But I only want you to treat this as kind of like a training wheel. Some people also switch to kombucha. It still has a little bit of sugar, but it's way lower than your average soda. I personally think that kombucha tastes like butt, but I have to mention it because it is an option. My favorite soda alternative these days is any naturally flavored carbonated beverage like LaCroix or similar brands like Perrier or San Pellegrino. Those types of drinks have zero sugar or zero artificial sweeteners. You still get the fizziness sensation and you also still get a little bit of flavor. And then eventually you just want to switch to unflavored soda water or just plain old water. I know it's boring, but it works. Number two, set a goal of getting 10,000 steps every day. I try to mention this as much as I can in a lot of my videos because there's really only benefits when you do this. And the barrier for entry is zero. Anybody can do it. My brother, who's also an entrepreneur, started getting 10,000 steps every day without changing his diet or his lifting routine. And he only lifts three times a week. And the guy lost 10 pounds and three inches off his waist in just a couple of months by just walking more. And walking is free. Yes, it doesn't burn a ton of calories, but who cares? It doesn't matter. Setting a goal 
of getting 10,000 steps spread throughout the day almost ensures that you avoid prolonged periods where you're completely sedentary. That's the real benefit of it because nothing shuts down your fat burning metabolism faster than prolonged periods of stillness. And living a sedentary lifestyle drastically increases your chance of getting all sorts of nasty disease. The term sitting is the new smoking is a little bit exaggerated, but it's honestly not that far off. And I used to be guilty of this where I would work out for an hour, but for the rest of the day, I would turn into a couch potato. I would barely move. And if you do that, you're still living a mostly sedentary lifestyle. You just move a little bit for a tiny chunk of the day. And getting 10,000 steps every day, honestly, isn't that hard. You just need to be aware of your actions. If you work a desk office job, for example, it's really easy to just bury your head and work away. But it's so much more beneficial when it comes to your energy and mental focus if you just take a five minute break for every hour that you're working or 10 minutes every two hours and just go for a walk. Like smokers get smoke breaks all the time. You can call this your mental break or your walking break with a bonus that you're not giving yourself lung cancer. Personally, staying active is something that I have to constantly remind myself because I work from home and I work in my room. So technically, I don't even have to put pants on. In fact, you don't even know if I'm wearing pants right now. Just kidding, I am. I shoot videos from my living room, but it's just so easy to just wake up, walk two steps to my stand-up desk, start working away and stay home all day, go to bed and not get any steps in. I didn't realize this until I learned the importance of NEAT, which stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, which is just a fancy name for getting general movement throughout the day. Like when I first tracked my steps, I was mortified. I think I only got about 4,000 steps, which is actually the average in North America. And that should tell you something. Because if you live in the US, West, or if you're in Canada, Canada's not that far off when it comes to this stack, and that's where I live. The average American adult, so two out of three, some stats even say up to 70%, is in the overweight or obese category. What I'm trying to say here is that you want to be way above average when it comes to getting in your daily movement, hence the 10,000 steps a day goal. So I like to make sure these days that I get at least four 15 minute walks every day on top of my workouts. And that always puts me over the 10K mark. I usually average around 15K. It's also when I listen to audiobooks while I'm getting in my movement at the same time. So that's a win win. Bonus points if you can also get in your steps close to nature because it's a great way to lower your stress levels. Extra bonus points if you can get in some morning sun and expose as much of your skin as possible to get some much needed vitamin D in your body. Why? Because most North Americans or if you live far away from the equator, you're most likely vitamin D deficient. If you expose a lot of your skin for about 20 to 30 minutes, you're usually okay. Number three, learn to read labels. I mentioned this earlier that your goal should be to revolve your diet around plants and animals and eat single ingredient, mostly in processed, nutrient-dense foods. In a perfect world, you won't even need nutrition labels. Like if you eat steak and eggs, for example, and then you eat some roasted cauliflower and avocado, there's really only one ingredient in all those foods. If you eat a burger patty, there's only one ingredient, beef. For all the plant-based advocates out there, a Beyond Meat has a grand total of 18 ingredients and it's also been processed to the nth degree. Which one do you think is healthier? Speaking of burger patties, this is why it's so important to learn how to read labels. Because for most people, a burger patty is just a burger patty. Well, not not all of them are created equal. Here's an example for you. To the naked eye, these burger patties are pretty similar, but they're not. This one has only one ingredient, beef. I don't know if you can see it. Well, this one has beef, water, toasted wheat crumb, soya protein, salt, onion powder, lemon powder, spice extracts, and garlic powder. I would probably go with this one, even though it's a couple of bucks more expensive. What I'm trying to say here is that for the foods with nutrition labels, you can learn so much about what you're actually putting in your body once you actually learn how to read the labels. It can even be pretty eye-opening. You're gonna learn that a lot of the foods that you thought was healthy actually isn't that healthy for you. Food manufacturers are extremely smart, for example, when it comes to hiding sugar. Sugar has something like 60 plus different names. It's the same thing when it comes to highly inflammatory inflammatory toxic vegetable oils like canola, sunflower, soybean, or peanut oil. I can't remember the exact number, but something like 60 to 80% of the foods that you can buy at the grocery stores in North America contain toxic oils and added sugar. For example, I bought minced garlic at the store one time and I thought that it was just soaked in water, so I didn't bother checking the label. Big mistake. When I got home, I opened it and I noticed that it was actually soaked in oil. I look at the back and I saw that the ingredients were garlic and soybean oil. Now, why are vegetable oils bad? When heated at high temperatures, some experts say that it's basically as bad as drinking radiation. Another seemingly innocent example here are roasted nuts. Check the label and sometimes you'll find that they're actually roasted in sunflower or canola oil. So you're eating something that you thought was healthy, but it's actually roasted in toxic oil. That's why, again, you want to learn how to 
read labels and you want to buy dry roasted nuts. Okay, the next tip that I want to give you is something that a lot of people forget to give themselves and I used to be guilty of this and that's practicing self-care. We live in a society these days where the state of busyness is glorified for some reason because we just want to feel productive and it's kind of become our default answer to, hey, how are you? We say, uh, busy. We're always busy. We always put things off. And one of the big things that usually gets shoved aside is time for self-care. We wear it like a badge of honor when we say, oh, I worked X amount of hours this week. And it's usually something excessive, like 60 to 80 hours. Or we say, I don't remember the last time I took a day off. And that kind of becomes the norm. And it makes it so much harder to actually carve out time for yourself because we feel bad and that's not good. You're not being nice to yourself when you do this. And honestly, this is when people get sick and they work themselves to death. But I promise you, if you put in the time and effort to take care of yourself first, if you prioritize yourself and make your happiness your number one priority, you're gonna be a hundred times more efficient in everything that you do. Your relationships will change and that includes your relationship with yourself. And that's extremely important if you wanna achieve a successful weight loss transformation because you can't give what you don't have. Think of a cup, for example. If you pour into your cup first, then you have something to give to all other aspects of your life. But if you don't prioritize yourself, you only have so much to give. And when your cup is empty, you have nothing to give and you're always going to be running on fumes. The oxygen mask instructions on a plane is a perfect analogy for this. You have to put on your mask first before you start worrying about saving other people. The moral of the story is you have to fill your own cup first before you start tending to everyone else's needs. That's why to me, it makes no sense when people say my family comes first. No. You come first. You need to take care of yourself first. You're no good to other people if you're not happy, let alone healthy. When I say self-care, by the way, I don't always mean taking lavish vacations. I mean, you can, obviously. It can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It doesn't even have to cost any money at all. As long as it's something that's solely focused on making yourself feel good. For example, I've gone to the movies by myself. I used to have this notion that that was weird. It's actually kind of fun. You don't have to share popcorn with anyone. Nowadays, I always take myself to nice dinner and I don't feel weird about it. I've gone on solo snowboarding trips. It can even be as simple as taking some time to just go for a walk and be with yourself. It can be as simple as taking 10 minutes of your morning to just meditate. It can be something as simple as journaling and practicing gratitude or all of the above. If you do little things like that, you're showing to yourself, you're proving to yourself that you're worth it that you deserve to be happy. And that effect compounds over time. You'll be a completely different person when you do this. And this will only strengthen your mental fortitude and you're able to bounce back so much faster whenever you have minor setbacks or maybe you don't even have setbacks to begin with. Because now, every time you're faced with temptations, you can easily say no because you know that it's just not worth it. Those temptations doesn't get you any closer to your weight loss goal, so why even do them? My last tip might be the easiest or hardest thing to implement, but I promise you it will yield immediate results. Change your environment. You need to do a complete purge of any trigger foods you have at home. Be ruthless about this. Just use this simple rule. If you have to think about it twice, it needs to go. If you feel bad about throwing it out, you can donate it to your local food bank or a homeless shelter. And don't feel bad about wasting money. This is addition by subtraction. You're taking out foods that doesn't move you closer to your weight loss goals and you're replacing it with better options. This is part of practicing self-care. You need to make space in your life, literally and figuratively, in order for this better and more awesome version of yourself to emerge. And you're gonna fuel this new version of yourself with the best foods possible. Because from from an evolutionary standpoint, human beings are just not wired for self-control. We're just not. Which means that if you have trigger foods at home, you can only say no to it so many times. So don't even give yourself that option to begin with. If you really want a treat, schedule a specific day for you to have it, but don't have leftovers for you to bring back home because now that one cheat meal all of a sudden becomes back-to-back -back cheat meals. Listen, one bad meal won't ruin your progress, but two in a row, that could be potentially the start of a new habit, so don't even go there. This isn't a give an inch, take a mile scenario. Now, here's the important part. If you live with family, it's extremely important that you communicate your goals with them. Better yet, make them your accomplice and get them on your side. Because this is just all about putting yourself in the best position possible to succeed. You need to give yourself a fighting chance and it starts by making small changes that add up to staggering results over time. The next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you want to lose weight? Because here's the thing. 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I wanna give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I melted 
all the fat around my stomach without depriving myself of my favorite foods or wasting hours at the gym. It's a simple four-step process specifically designed for busy professionals and it's the exact same blueprint that I teach to all my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's going to be a link somewhere at the top here or in the description box. Just click on it, type in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. All right, that's all I've got. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week. And hey, leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. First, a high five.